Hey, race fans, Alex Weaver here. You guys just got done watching What If Episode 4, where it was all about Ernie Irvin if he didn't hit the wall in Michigan in 1994. What if Ernie Irvin didn't hit the wall at Michigan in 1994? All right, I'm now going to be joined by the usual crew. We have Jonathan Merriman, Danny, and Eric. All right, guys, let's start with the opening question. So if Ernie hadn't hit the wall in Michigan in 1994, how would his career have been different? I don't know if you look at it, he was winning two or three races a year for about three or four years there until that happened. Um, you know, obviously, if you're winning races in the Cup Series, that's not an average feat. But when we talk about, you know, win totals and having around 20 to 25 wins, you know, that's that's not setting the world on fire, slightly above average. So I think he would have netted out somewhere in there. Is there a championship to that falls in between there somewhere? Uh, who knows? I mean, he's racing against guys like Earnhardt and and, and 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 other guys. Gordon comes along. So, you know, Tony Stewart's going to come along eventually. So I don't know what the window would have been. It certainly hurt his chances uh, at, at making a bigger impact in NASCAR, but certainly his career is nothing to, to you know, to scoff at. Yeah, Merriman, we can see where your stance is on the Earnhardt championships and how you, <laughs> how you feel about Bell's it. Bell's always chilling in the corner. <laughs> All right, Danny, Eric, what about you guys? Well, that, sorry, Jonathan, but that season where it happened, like I, I don't know that Dale Earnhardt would have got that championship that year had it not happened. I mean, it, he might have, but it would have definitely had to have been a lot harder. Um, and even in the in the what ifs uh, episode today, there was that quote where Dale Earnhardt said that you know I got to thank you know Ernie because he was sure you know going to give me a run for my money. That's for sure. So. I don't know. That, that would have been more interesting, more on the what if of who would have won that championship that year. Yeah, I think you look at the year and when that accident happened for for Ernie Irvin. You know, he was his mid thirties. You could argue that was his best statistical season of his career up to that point. We know that the the Yates cars were contending cars and we're still contending cars for several years after the fact so uh he might have just been maybe a, a late bloomer because you're right Jonathan he did start to win a couple races a year leading up to that point but 1994 really looked like the breakout possible championship season for Ernie and uh who knows if things have been different he might have stuck around and found victory lane quite a few more times after that I will say one thing he's got going for him or had going for him was the was the Yates equipment I mean you know that was that was top tier back in the day so let's say that those two were at the end of the season competing for that championship and it was just those two out for the running and that accident didn't happen at Michigan. Who was your pick to win the championship in 94 guys? I would say definitely <laughs> Ernie Irvin. I mean, he, he was, he was off to quite definitely his best career, uh, sorry, his best season of his career at that point. Yeah, we've got an Irvin guy. We have Earnhardt guy. I feel like I should be in the middle somewhere. I mean, it was close. They traded the lead back and forth quite a bit throughout that season. Uh, I don't know. Like I said a second ago, Ernie Irvin, I think at that point, was sort of on the upswing of his career. Earnhardt, of course, was still as good as ever. But he was, you know, was just, that was his final championship, of course. That was number seven. So he was on the back nine, more or less, if, if there is such a thing when we talk about Dale Earnhardt Sr. Um, so I don't know. That's a, that's a really good question. I don't know. The intimidator will always be the intimidator. And it's, it, it gets really hard when you're, you know, sentimentally tied to a driver to, to say that, you know, Ernie Irvin could have went on and beat him. But uh, I think the possibility is there. Um, but one thing that doesn't change is that, that Dale was still Dale. He still would use, you know, that front bumper and it came down to it. If it came down to it, you know, the last lap of the last turn at uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway where they crowned champions back then, um, you better believe that 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 Ernie in the 28 would have went spinning and Dale would have went by and, and won the race. But we can dream about that all we want to. Um, it's just, it's hard for me uh, with all this three stuff hanging on my walls and the stand up <laughs> and all this stuff to imagine Dale without seven championships. So, Alex, I just prefer not to go down that road. All right. Well, I didn't even need that explanation because I knew where your heart lied anyways. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's go back to Ernie Irvin and his career, however, because we know that when he left JGR, uh, Dale Jarrett stepped into his place. So if he hadn't have left and it would continue to race, how would that have changed the organization of Joe Gibbs Racing as a whole? Yeah, I don't know. I don't – I mean, you think of, of – of Dale Jarrett coming in there and 
and winning the Daytona 500 and really put Joe Gibbs racing on the map. I don't know if that happens if Ernie stays. Uh, I think if, if you look at their two careers, you know, respectively, Ernie had the accident. You know, the what if episode is if he didn't hit the wall in Michigan. But, I mean, Dale Jarrett on paper uh, just does so much more for Joe Gibbs racing, I think. Um, but um, it would have been interesting to see – Ernie and Joe try to build an organization together. Certainly, uh, Eric was talking about he was he was just now getting into the prime of his career. So maybe Ernie could have fed into that a little bit more. Um, that is uh, that to me is is one of the biggest questions out of this whole thing. Is you know what does Joe Gibbs Racing look like? Uh, what does Ernie's career look like? Um, it's super interesting to kind of you know play hypotheticals and and run down that road. Yeah, and Dale Jarrett coming in immediately uh, to drive um, to drive Ernie Irvin's car the year after uh, he was injured. That was a big kind of change in Dale Jarrett's career as well. And, and he's a NASCAR Cup Series champion. So how might that have been different? Uh, it, it really is. It's really hard to say. I think it's kind of fascinating to think uh, what would Dale Jarrett have looked like. Because I think the original rumors was that Dale Jarrett was even looking to explore ownership of his own team. He eventually did own his own Bush Series team with, uh, former quarterback Brett Favre, but you know it would have been fascinating to see. Uh, you know, was he was he going to still leave JGR and they was going to go their own path, or what would have been the case for him if if he hadn't had made that move over to uh, Yates Racing? Would he have been as you know legendary in the Ford camp for that matter? Well, we can also play to a hypothetical future situation that may still happen. It's still a chance for Ernie to get into the Hall of Fame. But if he would have won the championship in 1994, not taking the accident at Michigan, everything for his season on the upswing, we know that the championship is kind of the turning point to an automatic bid for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. But would he be a member of the NASCAR Hall of Fame already if the championship was his in 94? I think that's a good question. The, the question of would he be a Hall of Famer one day, I think that's answered. I think by winning a Cup Series championship, historically speaking, that's sort of your automatic golden ticket on into the to the chocolate factory. But uh, would he be in now? I don't know, especially with this year NASCAR kind of changing the rules behind the Hall of Fame. Now they only let two people in a year off the modern ballot as opposed to five. They were kind of flooding people in. I don't know if he would have been a part of one of those first – seven or eight or nine classes it would have been it would have been difficult there's a lot of drivers that had championships but had more wins ahead of him and when you factor out if the accident doesn't happen his career isn't cut short uh he likely races for another 15 or not 15 he doesn't race for another 15 years but he races probably for probably 15 years total in his career and if he continues to win races at that rate that might speed his induction in but if the wind sort of fizzled out I think we're looking at maybe he's he's more on like a Bobby Labonte. He's like just behind him, perhaps, as far as the numbers go. And and he made it in just a couple of years ago. So uh, I think it wouldn't be impossible for Ernie to be in by now. Yeah, I think if he'd had that championship, I could even see him going in, you know, as early as well this coming uh, year. I, th I think he would have been a perfect candidate for it. But having that championship does hurt him. But um, I think that for Ernie Urban's case, though, if I'm if you're asking me, would I put him into the Hall of Fame? Yes, I would, actually. I think he's probably one of the more underrated NASCAR drivers of all time. Yeah, I, you know, I think if you, if you take the accident at Michigan out of the, out of the situation, and, and certainly if he were to go on and, and win that championship, I think he would already be in because I think you could swap him with a guy like Dale Jarrett, and, you know, DJ's, he's in. Um, but to Eric's point, you know, the the induction, the class size now has has shrunk down so much. You know, that's it's going to be a long, long list of guys waiting to get in, especially since we've had so many recent retirements. I mean, Carl Edwards missed the ballot, and, he, and he's got, you know, I think 19 wins. He's got enough. Um, but I think Ernie's career would have been Hall of Fame worthy. He would have been floating around right around that that 30 win mark, which Denny Hamlin's oftentimes said, despite if you have a championship or not, the 30 win mark is probably going to get you into the Hall of Fame. That's a Hall of Fame career. Um, but look, even if Ernie doesn't make it into the Hall of Fame over the next five or 10 years, you can still look back at what he was able to do. I mean, heck, that accident would have taken, you know, it would have taken me off my feet. It would have taken anybody on this panel off their feet, and they probably never would have recovered from it. He came back, won three more races. Um, but if you look at the total sum body of work, 15 wins, I don't know. I don't know if it'll do it. 
he's not too far off from other drivers that have been in consideration. And I think when people do factor, and I think that is a very important factor, um, the fact that he did come back and race like a year later and, and still won races, despite not still not being a hundred percent of the driver he once was the fact that like 70% of Ernie Irvin was still capable of winning races in the NASCAR cup series to your credit, Danny, I, I think it makes a solid case that he is one of the most underrated drivers in NASCAR history. Unfortunately, you're right. The numbers may not be there, but if we're purely looking at, talented drivers drivers that maybe didn't get enough press play in their heyday i think ernie irving could very much be near the top of that list yeah i think about the accident he could have definitely been um the the 90s version of like you know our martin truex today a definitely a late bloomer who came into the prime of his career later in life but unfortunately just one little one little thing that was you know meant to happen robbed us of what could have happened all right, so you guys kind of teed me up for this next question, but put on your Hall of Fame ballot casting hats right now. Uh, if career would have remained the same, if the wreck at Michigan would have happened, uh, the 15 Cup Series wins that you guys have mentioned, is he going to get into the NASCAR Hall of Fame? I want a simple yes or no vote. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say, I'll say down the line, yes. Danny, what about you? Yes. All right. Well, okay. A good consensus. We kind of agree. <laughs> we'll we'll end it there with all of us agreeing, which is so nice for backseat. Um, all right, guys, you can continue to, to watch uh, this What If series. It's been a really fun one for us to break down. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. But the next episode will be Wednesday night on Fox's Race Hub coming up on FS1. Make sure you tune into that, and we'll see you guys right back here next time.